Okay, we're following up. This is a follow-up video to the wall-mounted PC, where last time when we left off, I mounted to the wall. It looks glorious. Everything's looking good so far, but there was one glaring issue that I didn't foresee when I had started that video, which is the god-awful tilt. Oh man, it's so bad. Yeah, so I, I didn't see that coming when I when I started uh, the last video, but there it is. The, the TV wall mount just isn't supporting the, the PC like it should. And, and not really like it should. I mean, it really shouldn't because it's it's meant for TVs, not for very front-heavy PCs and stuff. So uh, it's just not possible to get the PC perfectly straight and parallel with this wall with the stock mounting hardware that comes included with that TV mount. So today I'm going to try to correct this lean, which, you know, you can't really see it all that much from the front, but, you know, once you get to the angles and stuff, it's, it's really noticeable. So uh, it's bothering me enough to the point where I'm going to fix it today. And if you guys remember last time, I did try to actually fix it. I tried to MacGyver something, but it just didn't work out. I wasn't really prepared to try to fix this issue, uh, but now I am. Now, now I've, I've given it some time to really think about how I'm gonna go about straightening it out. And this is what I've come up with. Very simple. We've got an L bracket, actually two L brackets, one large one and one small one. They're being joined together by a nut and a screw. Woohoo! And then this is basically gonna go straight against the wall. Got some uh, molly anchors, some toggle bolts here that are going to keep the L bracket in place. So the back of the PC is basically going to lift up and go against the L bracket like this. And this little L bracket is going to keep the front of it in place and, and keep it from tipping forward. So hopefully that works. Uh, we're we're going to find out. And obviously I've got two of them, one on each corner, one on this corner, one on that corner. If that works, great. If not, it's back to the drawing board, but uh, we'll roll the dice on that for now. And then I've also got some RGB strips uh, or just one RGB strip that's going to go behind the system as well. This is purely just aesthetics. This is from Gobi. I've been using their products like crazy lately, even on my car. Subscribe to the Workhorse YouTube channel if you wanna see some of that. But uh, this is an addressable RGB strip. It's got a controller on it as well. So I actually already took it out of the box. So it comes with this controller, nice little hardware controller here. This is gonna to have to mount behind the PC because um, it's, it's really close. Uh, the cable's not very long from the actual strip. So this is gonna get mounted behind the PC, which isn't a problem. But uh, you can see that the power connector, it's also got a power cable a connector coming off of it, which is gonna to attach to the AC plug. And this has a long cord that's going to go behind the wall so that we can hide it and, you know, mask it and looks all nice and clean and stuff. And uh, we've got plenty of length to work with. It is uh, trimmable, so we can just cut it to length. That should be good to go. This is going to be a really simple installation, hopefully. And then finally, today, we're going to install these speakers from Edifier that I picked up on Amazon for like, I don't know, 130 bucks? They're not super high-end or anything. R1280DB. These are Bluetooth speakers, actually. So it's going to just cut down the number of cables that we actually have to route behind the wall. I think we're only going to need a power power cable uh, at the end of the day for, for both speakers uh, behind the wall there. So those are just going to go on either side of the system and really kind of just fill out that emptiness that we have on the left and right. Uh, I think they should look pretty cool. I'm probably going to remove these screens, these covers or whatever. That way we can just sort of see the uh, speakers itself, the tweeter and the subs. It'll just make it look a bit more edgy and uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of prefer the look over this sort of more um, sleek uh, appearance. So that is, oh yeah, and then I got the, uh, the wall mounts for it as well. These are sold separately, of course. And that's what we're up against today. I'm sure everything will go fine. We won't run into any complications like we ever do. And by the end of this video, everything will look awesome and we'll be ready to actually start using this system more frequently on a more regular basis, which I'm super excited about. So let's get it done. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by Keoxia. Keoxia actually has a rich history in the tech industry as being the inventor of NAND flash memory but they also have a full lineup of SSDs for pretty much any occasion, whether you're looking to drop an NVMe drive into an enterprise data center or a crypto mining rig, uh, gaming piece, I meant to say game, son of a With competitive PCIe Gen 3x4 speeds, the BG4 and XG6 series are well suited for gaming systems, while the CD6 and CM6 feature leading edge PCIe Gen 4 performance for Milan and Ice Lake servers. To learn more about everything Keoxia has to offer, click on the link in the description below.
god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it looks so good. <laughs> oh my god, look at it. it. It worked out so perfectly. It went better than I could have even hoped. So let me let me actually get up here and I'll try not to die while I climb up here. <laughs> if I if I do die, it'll be caught on camera, which is kind of cool. But anyway, uh, look at this. It just it, it's flawless. Uh, I, I sent a picture of the finished product to my uh, to my friend who's also a contractor. He actually owns his own contracting business, and he said that this looks stock, which is a huge compliment coming from him. He kind of does. I'm kind of in agreement with him. It looks so clean and it went in perfectly. Everything went super, you know, frictionless. There was only one little hiccup and it wasn't even that bad. So for this bracket on the left, you'll notice that these two screws are different. You probably saw from the B-roll that the bottom screw is not a toggle bolt. It's just a drywall anchor. And the reason for that being is because I didn't realize at first how close this was to the wall socket pass through cable kit grommet thing here. So had I done the spade bit, had I used like this, what is it? Five eighths inch spade bit right next to this guy, I was afraid that there would be too thin, like there wouldn't be enough drywall in between both of those openings and that it would just be weak. It just wouldn't have enough uh, bite to it or whatever. So I just used a drywall anchor instead, which takes up a lot less room and leaves a lot more drywall in between those two gaps. And so far, it, I mean, it's it's perfectly solid. I tested it and stuff before, uh, before I actually put the PC on. So this is solid. Using two toggle bolts for that one though, that's super secure and stuff. And one huge benefit to doing this, to actually having these brackets in here, is that the system is now very stable. It's it's like, it feels like it's actually mounted directly to the wall. Whereas before it was just kind of floating. It was kind of teetering on the wall mount. You know, I wasn't afraid of it actually falling off, but if I was like to like, let's say swap out the memory sticks and stuff, the system would be wobbling all over the place. Now it's just, it feels sturdy as heck. It's like, there's no wobble, no wiggle whatsoever. It just feels really, really solid, which is awesome. And of course, the main reason why we did all this in the first place was to get it nice and straight. And it's, I mean, I couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't be much more straight than that. It's actually maybe like a hair, maybe a degree or two actually the other way now, but I mean, it's it's so close that it's it's freaking awesome. It's so cool. And the RGB lighting looks incredible. I'll give you guys a fuller demo later on at the end of the video with different colors and the addressable lighting going and stuff, but OMG guys, the system is done. It's on the wall. I don't have to touch it for like a long time, hopefully. It's actually done. So now I can just move on to installing the speakers on either side, which we run into another issue with that, speaker time. So these the speakers, first of all, they look great. They sound great. I tested them, they work and stuff. This wire right here that came included, uh, which is connecting the two together, is not long enough, obviously. If we're gonna pass this through the wall and stuff, it needs to be a lot longer. So I'm gonna have to go to the store at some point and get a much longer cable, maybe like 20 feet or something like that. But that's not the issue I'm talking about. The issue I'm talking about is I forgot that I can't just pass a power cable like this through the wall. Total code violation. So I wanna be, I wanna, I wanna do it right. So I'm gonna have to figure out a different solution for it, which means I'm not gonna be able to actually get everything hooked up and wired today, but I am gonna still install the speakers and, and, and the wall mount stands on either side of the system so that we can actually get the full look going strong, all right? And then we'll have to circle back to the actual full wiring later. And on a side note, I have a little gripe here with these wall mount stands that I bought. So they're really sturdy, you know, they feel solid, it's all metal and stuff, but the only hole that they give you for cable management is that big. It's like the size of a dime or something. So I could easily pass the speaker wire through, but when it comes to something like this, I mean, I guess it's kind of a moot point because I can't pass this through the wall anyway, but I'm just saying, any kind of cable that's even remotely large is not gonna be able to fit through this little hole and stuff. And there's really not much more room to uh, to drill a, a larger hole. So I'm just pointing out that that's kind of a lousy design. It'd be nice if they actually put a larger hole right here. I guess I could screw in a hole right there. But again, I have to figure out exactly how I'm gonna route this cable through. I might have to get like a, like a plug box, like an actual in-wall plug box if I wanna do things legit and do it up to code and stuff. Again, that's gonna have to be in an, another video, but at least for now, we can start mounting these guys and it should look pretty cool.
Before we continue, a special thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. While most guys would love to keep a full head of hair throughout their lifetime, the reality is that two out of three men experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. I'm three years shy of that, and I've already started to notice that my thick mop isn't exactly what it used to be. Ignoring the fact that my old afro made me look like a discount Super Saiyan, Keeps offers the best chance of preventing hair loss by letting you take action while you still have your hair left. Getting hair loss treatments has also never been easier since these days you can just visit a doctor online and get medication delivered right to your home. The products just show up on your doorstep every three months so you never have to leave the house. A dreadful thought for the PC gamer and all of us. Keeps also offers generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there, which makes them safe, effective, and affordable. Since it can take four to six months to see results, it's best to start treatment sooner than later for the best chance of saving the most hair possible. The reason why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors is because it's proven effective for thousands of men over the years. So if you're noticing your hair thinning out or if hair loss runs in your family, the best time to act is now. For a limited time, go to keeps.com slash bitwit or click the link in the description below to receive 50% off your first order. All right, here it is, the finished setup. Mostly, mostly. I, I feel like a setup is, is, is kind of like a house, you know? It's never really done, but it's it's pretty damn done for all you know all things considered and it looks fantastic uh the speakers look really nice they kind of match they, they well they really match the setup and stuff that sort of fake walnut or whatever it's fake right yeah these are 130 dollars speakers they're it's totally fake but it still looks really nice nonetheless and uh i might have already mentioned this but they sound really good for the price I'm, I'm really impressed and honestly anything more expensive or fancy would be wasted on this space anyway because i can't bump the music too loud since there's apartment buildings above me and we've got a neighbor next door but anyway the speakers are great obviously i still need to do the wire Wiring. That's not been done. It's not hooked. They're, they're not hooked up at all whatsoever. So I still got to like drill holes and stuff. If you guys have a solution for how to properly route the power cable uh, through the wall and stuff, or you know some workaround for that, that's up to code. Uh, please let me know because uh, I'm not. I'm just not uh, in the know with that sort of thing. A couple other things that need to get done here, but they're very minor. So for starters, I don't know if you guys remember in one of the previous videos, but I, I made a boo boo. I made a couple boo boos when I was in, first installing these monitor stands to the wall. I, you can see that that screw hole right there. I need to patch that. There's also another one over there. And let's see, there's also a USB hub that I want to mount right here. I actually did mount one earlier, but then I realized, oh, I want one with an SD card because I might want to capture footage here once in a while or maybe even do some editing at this setup. Uh, so I have this, but this is old. It is USB 3.0, but it's old and it's kind of slow. I tested the speeds, it's only getting like 35, 40 megabytes per second, which isn't fantastic. So I'm going to get a newer one and then mount that right here. I'll have to make sure to mount it further to the right so that it doesn't interfere with the, uh, the armchair. The armchair, I mean, the chair arm. I think I want to use this Vertigear Trigger 350 because it's just such a nice, comfortable chair, unless something better comes along. I, I was trying to get one of those Logitech Herman Miller chairs because they're pretty badass, but uh, I don't think they want to give me one. So I might use this for now, but yeah, so I got to do the uh, USB hub. Oh, speaking of cable management, you, you guys probably want to take a look down there. So why don't we get down and dirty? All right, so this is our, our Govi LED strip. By the way, st stick around for the end of the video right after this, after I stop blabbing, uh, where I give you guys a full reveal, like a full montage with music and stuff with all the RGB going going at it. It's it's ridiculous. So stick around for that. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we also have, so we have this power strip here. These are our three monitors. The Gobi light strip that's behind the PC. This is actually going to uh, the actual pass-through, the, the cable kit pass-through that's going behind the PC. So it's powering the the, uh, the system. So this is actually powering this USB hub. This is a powered USB hub. Uh, so we've got our keyboard here, which is temporary. That's uh, one of the control master up keyboards uh, up there that you saw. It's a really nice keyboard, but I want a Bluetooth one instead just to clean up the wiring, but for now, it's plugged into this powered USB hub. If I just plug this into like a regular USB hub, like this one that isn't powered, then uh, the LEDs don't actually turn on. The keyboard still works, but the, the RGB doesn't. So um, it's really nice to have this powered one here for devices like that. I've also got the uh, the audio interface where our, our Sennheiser microphone for streaming is, is connected to. Um, that obviously needs to be powered as well. Oh, our stream deck. Uh, one of these is our stream deck. Uh, that's that's on the desk as well. And then over here, this is just, uh, what the heck is this? What the heck is this? What are you? What are you? Oh, this is the RGB coaster. This is the Razer RGB coaster. That's that's very limited and exclusive. It makes me feel super important and stuff. Uh, that's that's that. So other peripherals, whatever dongles and stuff can go there. I'll probably have a few more ports once I install another hub right there for with the SD card and stuff. Um, and then we've got these cable management channels. And um, we got two of them there with, with all the mess. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I still have to find a way to mount these power bricks either to the wall, just kind of like stick them on the wall or maybe underneath the desk so that they're not just hanging down like this. Kind of messy, but uh, we'll get around to that. The one cable that I have not managed yet is this one. This is the ethernet cable because it's really long. It has to go all the way across. It's going to go near. 
and then there's our router right there, the modem and stuff. So I'm gonna route that later because it's I have to clear out the rest of the room to do that. And the room's a wreck right now, as you can see. So that's our cable management sitch. Oh yeah, I mentioned that I did want to replace this keyboard with a Bluetooth option. I think I'm gonna do a Keychron. I think it's called Keychron. Um, Random Frank P recommended it, and so did a bunch of you guys when I asked on Twitter what's a good RGB wireless mechanical keyboard. Keychron was probably one of the, if not the number one answer, one of the top answers that you guys gave. And obviously I trust Frank with that sort of thing. It's kind of one of his expertises. Expertises? I don't know. I might go with one of those. If not one of those, then maybe a Logitech wireless one because the Keychrons can be sold out from time to time and, and harder to find. Um, but uh, yeah, either one of those, the Logitech, I forget the model name, G915? I don't know, something like that. Uh, one of those two keyboards will be uh, used at some point. This isn't like the final look of the setup by any means. Like I just threw in this wallpaper because it's dark and it doesn't appear overexposed on camera and stuff. But I'm eventually going to tweak settings and stuff, the RGB lighting and whatnot. So follow me on Instagram because I'll be posting, you know, updates as I as I go about changing the look and feel of the setup in the coming days, weeks, and, and perhaps even months. And I think that's pretty much it for now. I, I'm so super stoked for this to finally be mostly done, and I'm even more stoked with how it looks and how it turned out. It's just so functional, but looks so good too. Like, it, it's just, it's got everything. It's got, it really does. So uh, without further ado, guys, here's the final montage, awesome montage of, of the setup, and it's full glory. Enjoy it. It's freaking awesome. See you in the next one. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I I need, to, I need to add something. So uh, literally, I just added something to the setup that I think is pretty cool. It just dawned on me like, hey, this would be a cool addition. I added this in the background. This uh, this is a, actually, I did a video on this recently. The LandQ PC Dock Pro Max. This is the extra large one or the extra long one. <laughs> And uh, the reason why I included it is because even though I'm not putting monitors on it, obviously we've got floating displays, um, it's still very functional in other ways. For example, it adds a couple of USB, actually four USB ports, two type A, two type C, they're all USB 3.0, um, basically five gigabits per second ports. You can see I've already got a headset dongle in there. It also has a phone charger, wireless charging, which is nice, and fingerprint scanner, awesome. It also magically hides all the cables that were once very visible, kind of running behind the, the edge of the back of the desk and stuff. Uh, it's like it's like cheating. It's like it's it's totally not fair. Um, so it's super cool. It also hides the uh, the two holes, <laughs> the two bad holes that I was gonna patch. I'll still probably patch them and stuff, but uh, for now it's uh, it's cleaning them up. Um, so yeah, PC Docs there. By the way, links to everything. I'm gonna try to put links to everything in the description below in case you guys are interested. And oh, the other cool thing about the Land Doc or the PC Doc is RGB. Well, I guess I'll show that to you in the montage right now. Yeah.